In this video, I want to talk about the link between the sort of taking of an expectation of an indicator random variable and the probability of that particular event occurring in the event which we're talking about as being represented by an indicator random variable. So let's think about, first of all, what it actually means to take the expectation of any discrete random variable. And the example I'm going to give here is where x, or random variable x, represents the throwing of a fair die. So the sort of random variable can take on a whole range of values, sort of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. And there is an associated probability with each of those values, namely the probability that the random variable takes on that value, which in each case is a sixth, because we're assuming that it's a fair die for now. Okay, so if I asked you to find what the expectation of this random variable x is, I think that most people without too much thought would sort of reason their way that the expectation is going to lie in between 3 and 4, and in fact it's going to be exactly in between 3 and 4, it's going to be 3 and a half. So if I was to throw the die a large number of times, then the sort of mean value that I would get for summing together all the values that I get for each of my throws would tend towards three and a half. But how can we sort of prove this mathematically? Well, the answer is we just use our sort of rule for finding the expectation of a discrete random variable. The expectation of a discrete random variable is defined as the sum over all sort of values which that random variable can take of the sort of values which it takes times the probability of that particular value occurring. So in the case of a fair die, we're just going to have sort of the first pair is going to be the first term in our sum. So that's just going to be 1 times 1 sixth. And then so that that's the sort of first value when x equals 1. And then we're going to have our second pair, which is just going to be 2 times 1 sixth. Yeah, and we're going to continue sort of adding up all the way till 6 times 1 sixth. And it turns out that if I was to just add all this up in my calculator, then I would get 21 over 6, which is just 3.5. So we've just proved mathematically that the expectation of a fair die is actually 3.5. Okay, so that's the case of a fair die. How can we then apply this rule for the case of an indicator function? So let's think about a particular indicator function, which is the same one we used in the previous video. Namely that we're talking about the indicator function, which is x is greater than or equal to a which means that the indicator function takes on a value of 1 if x is greater than or equal to a, and it takes on a value of 0 otherwise. So if we sort of draw this function, what it looks like is it looks like we're just going to have 0 up until the point where x equals a, and then it's going to be equal to 1. So if we just mark in the values, we've got 0 here, and then when x hits a, it then becomes 1. So let's think about how we could find the expectation of this indicator function, because it's really a discrete random variable because it just takes on one of two values. So we can just use this formula up here. So if we use this formula up here, we get that the expectation of our indicator function is equal to, well, the first term is going to be the sort of probability that x is less than a times 0. So 0 times the probability that x is less than a. And that's the sort of first term. The second term is going to be when, x, when the indicator function actually represents 1 rather. So that's just going to be 1 times the probability that x is greater than or equal to a. But notice that in this circumstance, this first term is going to disappear. And actually, this second term is just 1 times the probability. So it turns out that this whole sort of expectation of the indicator function actually is equal to the probability that x is greater than or equal to a. Or in general for other indicator functions, uh, the expectation of that indicator function is equal to the probability of that particular event occurring. And this is quite an interesting result because it's connected the expectation of the indicator function with the probability. And this is something which is quite important in statistics and Actually, Joe Blitzstein talks about it in his great series of lectures, and he calls it the fundamental bridge between the expectation and the probability. Anyway, just a short video just to explain what I said quite hurriedly, hurriedly at the end of the last video, and I hope that helps.